Good morning, my name is Yvonne. I'm coming from Toronto, especially the University of Toronto. So for today, what I want to share with you guys is about like trying to be an authentic designer, which is probably like um, something I hope it will make you feel interesting. Then, yeah. So actually, I always feel a little bit awkward to like uh, say, hello, my name is Yvonne, then what should I say after that? Especially during the recruiter call, I always uh, feel awkward as well. Like after I said like, hello, Maggie, then what else should I say? Like there are three things I would like to share with you. Or actually I should directly jump into previous experiences to say something, something like, um, very good. For example, like I used to work at Tita, I used to work at the uh, Tencent, and I'm also a product lead at a startup. So, but that actually just my side hustle project. Then blah blah blah. blah. Then actually, probably you have uh, heard about this type of like self introduction from YouTube or any other social medias with the million of the viewer views. But all of those type of like. Uh, I would like to say it's a model of the self-introduction made me felt in the past. Why? I guess there are two major reasons. First of all, there's something everyone could talk about that. Hello, my name is Yvonne. My name, I, I'm coming from University of Toronto and blah, blah, blah. That's something everyone could say that what is the thing is a little bit make you different from others. Then the second would be like, we are hiring for intern, a uh, new grad, but she's a leader already, so she's overqualified. And more importantly, that's something not make people feel very excited. Is that anything actually make you be different from others? So later on, I decided to get rid of all of those buzzwords about like uh, what type of the uh, role I income with uh, probably like uh, 10 or 7 different experiences. I trying to do one thing is just uh, trying to show more about the true me, the true of myself. For example, I am an emoji specialist. So probably the recruiter or hiring manager, when they see my portfolio, they have a sense that like this person really like apply the emoji so emoji specialist is very cool then secondly i am a stomach then with the i'm a foodie with a big stomach so no matter during the interview or the um presentation i always mention that i'm a foodie then don't forget to uh, so, so subscribe my channel every friday night on instagram i will share at least the one good restaurant in the world with some interesting insights, then actually this kind of, I would like call it as a strategy, help me got a, at least a three interview offer from Yelp, which I will interview, I'm interviewing right now. And some of other staff in Toronto or mid-sized company, I feel uh, I just uh, trying to showcase myself that make me, uh, people feel like, okay, I could resonate with her then that's something I am as well. So it's kind of a good icebreaker topic, I would like to say. And also, uh, also I trying to show, like I like summer days and coming from most the southest part in China. Um, uh, so I really like uh, ice cream. And also um, a night wall, that's something probably most of the designer has similar habits. And so because I am a night wall, so I am a uh, coffee person. It's, uh, coffee is my superpower to wake up every morning. So it's just like today, I'm actually holding my coffee. <laughs> Having my coffee is very important for me every morning. And then I'm also a global traveler because I travel around the world almost like a new country every year to explain what kind of like uh, culture, actually uh, culture things and actually all of those experiences give me a very good inspiration on my later design. And I'm a photographer. I, yes, I used to be a photographer at the Raptors Now 5. And I'm a food, AR filter creator. That's actually something I work at TikTok to have everyone enjoy the Halloween without any limitation, as long as you have the app. 
you could play the future anytime, anywhere. And it, I also give a short explanation about how I understand the product design based on something about me. So, uh, for example, I'm a foodie. Uh, then I really like use the burger as the metaphor to explain myself uh, about how I understand the product design as just like a tasty burger. Why? Because when we see the um, product design, probably you will see a lot of like different layer experiences from the most front end to the consumer side It's the visual part. And then there are something about like branding, digital services flow and the um, physical uh, and uh, some physical things, but UX is the most juicy part. So during the interview, I always present this to my um, interviewer. Then actually there's something I feel they are excited about me, but this is uh, not something I learned from the website or learned from the YouTube. It's just about how I understand product design. So I'm trying to show an authentic me rather than just a repeat memory stuff from someone else. Since my, then since my uh, mindset started to change, I, uh, I trying to show more about myself. And here is uh, my competency to the interviewer. There are some things actually change a lot. For example, every morning when the first time I did, um, the first thing I did is to open my Gmail. Since I changed my presentation style, there are less um, rejection letters in my Gmail box. Instead, I receive more interview invitations from the recruiter. For example, for example, um, I got more recruiter calls from the hiring manager to, uh, and also so everything is moving forward. In the past two months, actually, there are three hiring manager uh, told the recruiter they want to talk with me because my portfolio hooks them and uh, I sh I'm trying to show a kind of like a personality on the portfolio not just a beautiful picture but more about like um, about me uh, how I design stuff probably you have already realized that actually English is not my native language so after I trying to be more authentic to show myself and speaking, uh, speak less those kind of like buzzwords about, oh, I'm a leader for a club, or I'm a leader for blah, blah, blah. It actually helps me to avoid a lot of the troubles. Then here, let me pause a little bit as well. I trying to, I want to share, uh, share, my, uh, express my thanks to a lot of my mentors, for example, one. Uh, he, uh, him called Rex, who is my old classmate at SFU. Uh, he's a good communicator, successful designer, and gave me a lot of constructive feedbacks and mentor me the tell me about yourself uh, in the interview part of around like three weeks, three hours in this week. But more importantly, one thing he told me is about like trying to be yourself, but at the same time being humble. It's very important for a new grad or or like uh, someone's like an intern, especially the market today is very competitive. Probably you guys already know. Uh, so from the interviewer perspective, they really look for someone that's very humble, but willing to learn and very collaborative. So that's very important as well. At the same time, after I can uh, change a lot of things, I slowly pass more interviews from the first round to second round. Or this week, I just uh, I finished a sixth round interview with a staff with a very positive, uh, positive feedback from the design of the director. Let's see if the staff will give me the offer on next week or not. Then actually, this is a snapshot of my about me page on my portfolio. Uh, you probably have, uh, can see I'm not following a lot of like uh, portfolio from others. Just uh, put a big picture and uh, in the bombing page and uh, put a big paragraph next to the photo to explain like how I conduct the research process, define the uh, problem solving process, and uh, here's my usability test the result and the final delivery. delivery. What I'm trying to do is trying. Uh, as well, like I'm trying to paraphrase all of those in my words. 
And I'm not sh- saying that it's not useful. It's actually useful. Uh, the double diamond helped me to uh, solve the explore the problem. I would like to say, but more important, I'm trying to show how I solve the problem in a very easy and simple way to resonate with my uh, listener. Uh, because, for example, I am um, well. Uh, I'm a night vol, so I need a coffee to survive. So eat, uh, drinking coffee is one of my solution to keep me awake. So I just uh, craft everything in my words to show my understanding from how to diverge the problems to converge the solutions. Then what I'm trying to point out here is I really want to like uh, have everyone to think about like, who is the yourself? And as a human being, all of us have something feel probably very passionate about and feel free to speak it up in your portfolio, your presentation, every time you talk with others because nobody wants to talk with uh, like a machine or actually we call it as a robot. If you told me, okay, today uh, I'm if, well, I'm coming from University of Toronto. Mm-hmm. I used to intern at TikTok. I used to intern at Tencent and blah, 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 blah. I, have, I would like to say no interviewer cares about that and they will feel very bored. What they really want to see is about an authentic yourself to the world and also think about like uh, your interviewer as your user. So every user want to learn something different from you. It could be your hobby, a design principle, or anything else. So try to be a storyteller and be confident to share your superpower with the world. So usually one of the case study I always uh, case I always uh, I always present in my portfolio uh, deck as well. I really like Super Mario, and product design is just to help people to craft the solution, a better delightful experiences to help them level up in their society so which is just like how super mario um it's a lot of the machines and trying to uh, save his princess because he once he become a stronger he could like a uh, battle with more like um, bad people or bad things so as a product designer uh, what i really want to do is just create more questions to my end user and help my user see a better version of themselves. Then let me have a little bit of self-introduction officially instead of just about like um, I'm coming from University of, of Toronto. I usually will say like, hello, I'm Yvonne. I am an emoji specialist who loves to craft some delightful experiences for my and users and the consumer and make them feel like they are beloved by this world. Then here is the end for today. Thanks so much. Do you have any questions? Yep, so everyone, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and I can read them to you, Vaughn. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I do have a few questions for you that I was uh, wondering. So you mentioned briefly that you did work previously at TikTok and uh, mm-hmm. Tencent before well. And then a, a large um, topic that you talked about was um, talking more about your passion rather than necessarily like your skills. How yeah. did, um, did, and a lot about communication as well, that like, communication is like a huge part of design. Um, how did like those kind of uh, tips that you gave help you like in the past, the uh, places you've worked? or um, kind of like growing as a designer yourself? Yes, so first of all, that I would like to answer this question in two parts. First of all, I'm not coming from a, like a design, um, designer background. I have a little bit like a, a hybrid background from like a PM to digital marketing, then a designer. So I usually I will highlight, okay, I used to work at it TikTok and I have done to just about like uh, more user to explore experience their Halloween every day as long as you have the app then you can like um, uh, enjoy that then pre- then and also I joined Borrowa and Tencent then that's it after that I will put a lot of uh, 
paragraph to share about like how are understanding their product design. For example, I always, one thing I always show is about the burger. It's a much different than most of the candidates, right? So, but that's I see that as something actually get the interviewer feels very excited and they want to talk more with me. And sometimes we talk a lot about like which is the which is their favorite uh, restaurant in the world or in Toronto. Then if I see the interviewer started to talk with me about his personal life, actually it's actually a quite a good sign for move forward. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's really like insightful because a lot of times when people go into these interviews, they're thinking just about their um, kind of like skills and the things they have to know and they kind of lose the like kind of creative and like passion aspect. So we do have some questions in the chat, so I'll just mm -hmm. read them out to you. You can answer. Okay. Yep. You talked about being an emoji specialist, which when you put that in your uh, biography, I was like, oh, I've never seen this before. That's like really interesting. So what's your favorite emoji, actually? Uh, I would like to say luck. So this one is my favorite emoji. I'm not sure how, well, it's the, uh, exactly like a, a term for this one, but I really like this one. I, if I don't know something, I always add, uh, use this emoji just as a signal to ask people what's that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which emoji specifically? I don't think we uh, can see on this. I screen. put in the, oh, uh, sorry, I just, uh, uh, I oh, feel well, like I cannot like type into the comments. I could oh, just yeah. uh, type into put the, in the private chat. I'll just yeah. put it in the, yeah. Um, yeah. It's the, um, like uh, both of the eyes emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's actually the emoji that um, Jocelyn who asked the question put, which is pretty <laughs> funny actually. Yeah, I always use this one. As yeah. well as I feel like because I'm not a very talkative person, so mm -hmm. a lot of time I feel a little bit awkward with my friends or with someone else. If as long as he's not my supervisor or at least that he's not a stranger for me, I usually have, I use this one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And we have another question is you also mentioned that you're a product designer. So is product design just all about specifically designing the digital products or are there more aspects to it as well? So I would like to say product design is a very big term. It's not just about the digital design. But for me, because of those products I have developed in the past are all about the digital products. So that's the reason why uh, I highlight most of my portfolio, uh, products. Uh, are just about related to the digital products. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think there's like definitely a lot of more aspects than just designing digital products. Another question mm -hmm. is uh, visual and UX research process. Which do you personally think is more important to crafting your por portfolio? Well, I would like to say for this one, no matter visual research or UX research, as long as you are building your portfolio, storytelling is super important. That's something like probably the school will not highlight that much, but actually interviewer or like during the daily life, uh, daily work, Everyone cares a lot about this part. I have interviewed a lot of company. They said like um, the first thing the recruiter told me is about like for the portfolio review section, we not care about like how brilliant the project you have done. We just care about your storytelling skill set. So visual and the UX research skill uh, process, I would like to say both also of them are very important. They're just related to which position you are applying for. If you're looking for a visual designer position, yes, visual research is very important. If a UX or product design, UX research is very important as well. Then more importantly, um, it's about like when you have the um, process, how you craft it into a story, make it compelling, it's very good, important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very like insightful. Yeah. Mm. Um, we do have one more question. Then I have like a question that I just thought of on my own. Could you, uh, we talked about portfolio a few times. Would you be able to give us a kind of tour of your own personal project portfolio or like projects you've done in the past? Well, because one thing is well, most, I, I, I don't do that because some of my mm. projects are still NDA. So I would like to say, don't put that much project on your portfolio. Usually four is enough. And just to keep the first two where we good is enough but i could give you some suggestion here i would love to share something like a great portfolio with you guys that's something i feel like 
probably well very helpful. And more importantly, one thing is that like except the, uh, for like uh, just looking around the personal portfolio, trying to uh, read more like uh, case study from the agency because agency is very good at the visual and their um, kind of like a design storytelling, trying to follow with them uh, to learn how to present a good story. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we do have a lot of the people in the des in this uh, designathon are kind of like newbie designers. They've never they don't have as much experience. So uh, as a newbie designer, uh, what in your personal opinion, what do you think they should focus more on in the portfolio or like where should they like get started? Really? Uh, you mean like a uh, new uh, designer who just uh, started to re uh, build up their portfolio? Yeah, they just they're yeah they're just like starting to get into like design or UI UX design. Um, where should they really get started, or what areas do you think that they should focus on um, to kind of build like a strong portfolio for their interviews and for their like future? Yeah, so it's really hard to say because everyone has their own strengths. For me, I just learned the design system in one week or less than one week. Then a lot of like designers ask me. It's like, are you a visual design? So I really, it's really hard to say where to start. I would like to say, find your own strengths. That's very important. Then trying to explore more on that part and highlight that in your portfolio. At the same time, more importantly, is to trying to show your understanding uh, in different part of the product design on your portfolio. So different case study has a one thing or two things you're trying to highlight, which is, is the other project probably never touch about that. And more importantly, it's about like trying to talk with the mentors, especially some uh, leaders in the industry. Uh, for example, what I always did as well, like go to the ADP list and they're trying to book some session with the uh, mentor to ask about like, okay, here is my uh is my career like uh path I would like to pivot. Do you have any suggestion? And is there anything I if I just uh, pivot this way, uh, pivot my career in this way? Do you have any suggestions or do you have any critiques uh, on my portfolio or my presentations? Everything like this. Yeah. So trying to learn from your mentor. Definitely, yeah. Finding like what you're ag exactly interested in, and then finding mentors in that field so they can actually help you with that and taking advice from that, and then building your project based on that is basically a summary of what you said. Yeah. So I have um, one question myself. You talked a lot about the storytelling process and the communication process, and how that's actually more uh, kind of like one of the most popular skills. Um, do you have any like personal tips or experiences on how you built your storytelling, your communication skills for like through uh, interviews or like through uh, all the experiences you've been through? Well, honestly speaking, it's just more it more takes time to craft my story. So, but it's really hard to say like uh, how to improve the storytelling it takes time but one thing i would like to share is about like waiting uh, uh in waiting uh, portfolio the story i feel really good it's about like when he, so this one is actually is my favorite one and i learn a lot and I inspire a lot from here so compare with the other story or like another case study you can see that first of all when we conducted a lot of like research things about like who is my persona and then what is the uh, character my persona have, he trying to paraphrase all of them into a, into a small story like this. What call for the call for the idea for the Gen Z user? That's the research result and how it works. What is the insight? He uh is a more about like a synthesized process. But everything, uh, when you screw down, everything is just like a story. I feel I really like this case study. So that's the reason why I highly recommended this portfolio. And after he conducted the high my V uh, code, uh, there are a lot of like a visual, uh, a very appealing visual presentation to hook me want to continue to read this case study. So I would like to say that's no, what um specific way to improve the storytelling probably you could watch more youtube about the ted talk because they always have a story then after that it's more about like 
how you can uh, continue to improve that and talk with more people and collect them, their feedbacks to uh, iterate that. Yeah. So I suggest to uh, read this portfolio and it, I believe it will be very helpful. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. So like experience and um, kind of like getting feedback is huge parts in storytelling. And uh, you mentioned that portfolio that you really liked a lot in the chat. Uh, our MDL uh, des like design team has placed a few of the portfolios you've talked about. So anybody who's watching or anybody who watches this after the fact can see, uh, check out the links to those. And um, yeah, they can see everything you've been talking about. And yeah, we're, I think we're just about done this talk. So I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time mm -hmm. out to come to our designathon and mm -hmm. give this uh, talk on being an authentic designer and building our overall portfolio. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And one of the things about, like, as I just mentioned a lot today, is about About Me page. Trying to go to his uh, her About Me page. I really like that. And actually, this is one of the like, uh, thoughts that inspired me how to craft my uh, personal page. Yeah. So go to this website. It will help you a lot. All right, I think that's pretty much about that. Awesome, yep, thank you so much. All right, bye.